good. Other couple things for the wedge, right? And this is really good for short irons. I never like to see, and you probably won't see very often, a wedge finish up here. The only time you're gonna see that is when we're at winged foot and we're at the US Open and we're going to a front pin, okay? Only time. So we get connected in the backswing, boom. We get connected on the through swing. Everything should be able to stop up there at that kind of half or three quarter. That is a direct relation to how your sequence was in the downswing. If the inside horse wins, guess what? You're gonna have to try real hard to stop that club at a, at a three quarter or a half finish. If you have the correct sequence, you can get in there and it's almost like it stops by itself. It's not coincidence that all the players you guys watch on TV every week have this kind of three quarter finish look where everything's up here. So a little bit more of the abbreviated finish. With wedges, we always talk about how you're only going half or three quarter in the backswing and you're really only going half or three quarter in the through swing. That a boy, better. Wow, what a different sound, oh my gosh. So that's how you're gonna work on your wedge play. You're always remembering, it's three quarter to three quarter. It's half to half, you know? I'm never really, with a scoring club, which we define as eight iron, nine iron pitching wedge sand wedge, you're not hitting that far or solid by making a big swing. You're hitting it far with efficiency, with a shorter, more connected golf swing, and angles okay, and sequence that are gonna turn into good efficiency through the golf swing, all right? The result will be, if you do it correctly, that little bit shorter finish. Mm. Man, dude, I mean, how good is that? Come on. Way better. Bro, unbelievable. Yeah. Un Those are some of the best golf forward. things I've seen you make. Let's go. I mean, come check out this top of the swing. This is the most connected backswing I've ever seen you make. And here's the thing. I mean, this is why we do it, guys. You gotta understand, okay? He's going here. Does this feel shorter than normal and slower? It feels like I'm um, like John Rahm, like right feels here. Feels like literally like your waist high, yeah. okay? Let's watch where this really goes, okay? And this happens every time. It's my favorite thing to do to players, okay? Full swing, left arm on the shoulder, right elbow down and in, club right down the line. What a beautiful example of a connected backswing. But again, where does this feel like to you? It feels like you're right, yeah, there. right there. Yeah, It feels like he's right there. And this is a big body turn with a short connected arm swing, okay? And that's our goal. And your first swings of the day were long, quick arm swings. The fastest way for an arm swing to get long, guys, is guess what? The club head and the hands go quicker than the left shoulder. But when the left shoulder is moving the hands and the club up there, wow, everything just goes up there together. And you get to this point where you almost like can't turn anymore, mm -hmm. okay? And you're up there. So that's really good. Let's take a look at that again. And then we're going to keep moving through the bag and we're going to talk about some other stuff. But a wonderful setup. Nice rhythm in the backswing, all connected. Gets up there and pauses, boom, and then rips it. And we're going to see, wow, this club coming down right on the forearm, right in the slot. Look at that, there's the checkpoint we love on the downswing, right between the hands and the knee. Boom, right down to the back of the golf ball, bud. Unbelievable, yeah. okay? But here's the thing, this has to be this much focus on it, the start of every single time you hit golf balls, yep. right? Every time you should be starting with a sand wedge or a pitching wedge, and you're not making swings for 10 shots above your shoulders. Because guess what? If I get that, that pitching wedge out, and all of a sudden I make the first swing of the day that, it, that Alexander did, and it's up here, guess what it's gonna look like when I get to my five iron or my driver? We're gonna be John Daly, and we're gonna be wondering why we're hitting it everywhere, yeah. okay? So we start shorter and more connected, and then as the clubs get longer, you're gonna naturally lengthen it out a little bit. But again, the, the moral of the story, it's gonna feel like it's a shorter golf swing. When someone makes a bigger turn with a shorter arm swing, it feels like it's shorter because their brain is used to associating that with a full swing, there's okay? Just, there's no like extra arm lift at the top, which nope. is what I feel all the time. It's just body turning up there, yeah. right? Absolutely, absolutely. One or two more. Mm. Good, and you know what? You guys tried at home. Tell me this, it's a workout, isn't it? Yeah, I you mean, engage your core, even though it's a, a race with the hands getting in front, you still have to kind of hit the ball 
with your with your core because the swing again isn't going past. It's shorter. It's shorter, yeah. right? And so here's the thing. You know, everybody says that when they come and so when you guys come and see us in person, we get a lot of people reaching out from YouTube, and we're, we're so lucky and blessed to have you guys come out and see us. But the first thing everybody says, they look <laughs> at us after three swings, and they go, oh, "Man, I didn't know it was this much work to swing a golf club. Holy <laughs> cow!" Okay, because guess what? Swinging the club with your arms with no connection to the body is not a lot of work, okay? And people don't swing the golf club with their big muscles, all right? When we get in here and we go to the top, it literally feels like I could take a punch right here. I'm flexing so hard like I'm doing a sit-up, and that's what allows me to pull my hands down in front of my body and get them in front of me, okay? That connection and that core, all right? We always talk about how kind of the core is the connector between the force you're getting from the ground and getting it into the club. If it's soft... Ugh, no chance. We could have any any one of four or five things happen. All right? Yep. A couple more just like that, buddy. Really, really good. Pacing it back, keeping it shorter, everything's stopping. Ripping the hands, abbreviated finish. Whew. Much better. And this is every day of your life. Like, this yeah. is what, when Adam and I are hitting our first shots of the day, if we're not having a 700 or a driver in our hand, like, this is how we warm up. Yeah. You know, shoulder to shoulder connected, right, all of these things that are going to produce that same golf flight over and over. Hmm. So pause right there, Alexander. This is what I want to show everybody, okay? When you do it correct and the sequence is correct, he's posted up around his lead leg. The right shoulder has turned over the front foot, okay? He is really straight up and down here, and his right side is stretching through the golf ball, okay? Show me what a bad finish would look like, right? When the inside horse wins, boom, his upper body is back over his back foot, his belt buckle is really close to the target, and the club is really long, right? Real loose, very inconsistent, okay? Real much, boom, oh, like this, there's that earlier finish, and now it's just, boom, that ball's going right there, and it's going there straight. At Forzac Golf, we take a lot of pride in having developed some of the best and most consistent golf swings on the planet. We do this through simplicity. Our Full Swing Masterclass will take you on a step-by-step, -step, easy to understand process on how to get your golf swing better than ever. Join the many before you who've utilized our Full Swing Masterclass to take their games to the next level and beyond.